We finally upgraded to Tesla's premium connectivity. The question is, is it actually worth it? Well, for starters, it costs $10 a month here in Australia for premium connectivity, and that gives you unlimited internet data inside your Tesla, which means watching as much YouTube and Netflix as your heart desires when you're stopping at a charging station. However, charging stations are pretty quick these days, and in 10 months of owning this car and going on many road trips, we've never really found ourselves sitting in the car while it charges. Most superchargers only take around 20 minutes to charge your battery up to 80%. And because you're never really pulling into a charger with 0% battery, it means by the time you've stretched your legs, you're ready to hit the road again. So obviously unlimited amounts of Netflix and YouTube is really awesome. But in terms of real world practicality, we haven't ever felt that we've really needed it. The car actually comes with a 30 day trial and after that you'll need to pay for the upgrade via the Tesla app. It is worth noting though that you can actually hotspot the data from your phone instead but you do have to manually connect every time you get in the car. This is where I wish that Tesla had Apple CarPlay because Apple CarPlay just uses the cellular data from your phone to give you all those streaming services. And in the Tesla case, you're actually paying for two data plans, your phone and the car, even though your phone is always with you when you're driving. I do, however, remain hopeful that Tesla will release their very own app store, which could honestly end up making it the best in-car system available. We use Apple Music and Apple Podcasts, but thankfully the Bluetooth being so good in this car makes using Siri pretty seamless. Hey, play the latest episode of the Tesla Daily Podcast. Okay, here's the latest episode of Tesla Daily. All right, so aside from the data connectivity stuff, what else do you get with this subscription? Well, in Australia, some of the cool new features such as Sentry Mode's live camera view and Boombox are not available here yet, although I suspect they'll be coming sometime soon. And when they do, it'll make paying that $10 a month a lot more compelling. Probably the most useful feature of having the premium connectivity is the live traffic view you get on the maps. You also get the option for this really nice satellite view if you do prefer that. And worth noting here that rerouting will still occur even without premium connectivity. Here's a quote directly from Tesla's website. All cars with standard connectivity will continue to receive the same core maps and navigation functionality as cars with premium connectivity, including traffic-based routing. Other small things include car karaoke, inbuilt streaming with Spotify, as well as the big web browser on the touchscreen but for all of those things, it's still easier to use your phone. So, what's the verdict? Is the premium connectivity worth it? Well, in our case, we have so many different subscriptions at the moment, we would gladly take this one off the list because for us personally, when we're driving this car, we're not getting enough value out of these small features. But certainly, when more features come available with this premium connectivity, we'd gladly jump back on the bandwagon and sign up again for that $10 a month. The cool thing is that Tesla are always bringing out new software features and their entire subscription-based business is actually pretty cool because it means when something like full self-driving makes its way to Australia, I only have to pay for one month and I get to trial the entire platform as opposed to paying $10,000 up front. And I'll be sure to do a video on that as well. Check out the other five minute short informative videos I've got on my channel. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. In the meantime, let me know what videos you want me to make next and I'll catch you guys in the next one.